Welcome to Real People Weekly News. I'm Nicole. Over the next few minutes, we look at the top stories of the past week, stories that made news and give you a glimpse of what the party has been up to. Let's begin with the top stories. For the week of August 28 to September 2, we saw the following. Party President Mark Golding says Jamaicans are free to support the party of their choice, regardless of skin color. Our party is a democratic and open organization. It affords discussion and the description of the realities of class, race, and inequality in various ways by different comrades, even in terms that some may sometimes not like to hear. Western Westmoreland students get $30 million in help. Approximately 10,000 students from the Westmoreland Western constituency are going to benefit from a $30 million investment in their education through an ongoing initiative spearheaded by People's National Party Ian Hales. This will initially benefit students heading back to school on September 5th as the new term begins. It covers back-to-school medicals, bags, books, and other supplies. This comes as a relief to many parents. Hale stated that 15 schools will benefit from the ongoing back-to-school treat and is being supported by the PMP's five sitting councillors in the constituency, all of whom will be seeking re-election when the next local government elections are called. Chairman of the People's National Party's Region 5, Kern Spencer, says the party is ready to face the electorate in local government polls and is confident of victory. He was speaking at this past Sunday's annual Regional Executive Council meeting. That the political machinery in Region 5 is a different one since the last 12 months. Region 5 is the only region in the People's National Party that has now all eight of its constituencies recognized in each of the constituencies in Region 5, as I said before. The parishes of Manchester and St. Elizabeth has been laid for the local government election. We are ready. And we want to place and request that we are very disappointed that the elections were put off which were due constitutionally from last year and was set to February of this year and it was called off by the Jamaica Labour Party because the People's National Party in Region 5 was ready to win back Manchester and to win back St. Louis. Opposition spokesperson on industry investment and global logistics, Anthony Hilton MP, is today calling on the government to do more to assist the struggling micro, small and medium enterprises sector. Hilton expressed that the available evidence indicates that some 40% of the MSME businesses are either teetering on bankruptcy or have already shuttered their business. He went on to say that the so-called business unfriendly environment, increased interest rate, high energy prices and tightening access to capital in the wake of the global pandemic has rendered a large segment of the MSME sector failing or struggling to survive. Campbell says Security Minister Police Commissioner must go. PMP General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell has called on Prime Minister Andrew Holness to fire the National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang and the Police Commissioner General Anthony Anderson. When the current Prime Minister was leader of opposition, he made a statement that if the country loses confidence in a minister, then that minister must go. Now I saw a done on this poll just last week and in that poll it said that 93% of the country said they don't have any confidence in Horace Chan or the Commissioner of Police. So I want to ask the Prime Minister, what are you waiting on to change your Minister of National Security and change the Commissioner of Police? Meanwhile, the PMP General Secretary says his party will only support a consensus on crime if the security policies being proposed are in the best interest of Jamaicans. We will support the government when they put good policies on the table. But if it's bad policy, nobody can call us to support the bad policy. Campbell was speaking at the Southwest Constituency Conference this weekend. PMP saddened by death of Francois Saint-Just. 
The People's National Party expressed sadness at the news of the death of veteran broadcaster and radio personality Francois St. Just. St. Just died last Monday morning at the University Hospital of the West Indies. He had been ailing for some time. PMP President and Leader of the Opposition, Mark Golding, said, St. Juice left an indelible mark on the nation's media. His passing has put the entire Jamaican in mourning. I always enjoyed listening to Francois on Fame FM and later Radio Jamaica with the humor and joy he brought to the airways. For over two decades in broadcasting, Francois reflected the best of the Jamaican personality. He made an indelible mark on our nation's media, and we give thanks for his life. CMOC re-engages stakeholders. The Crime Monitoring and Oversight Committee, CMOC, in a release last Monday, said that during the well-attended meeting, Senator Peter Bunting of the Opposition People's National Party reaffirmed his party's continued commitment to the mission of the CMOC. Pointing to his recent statement on the importance of the role it is expected to play in ensuring consensus on key matters. Senator Bunting also emphasized that the CMOC must maintain its independence and objectivity when identifying meaningful key performance index that are crucial to attaining the primary objective of reducing crime, violence, and corruption. Opposition leader Mark Golding says the People's National Party continues to attract and welcome enlightened private sector interests to build a progressive alliance to help uplift disadvantaged Jamaicans. He went on to say, We have always been a, an alliance of the progressive elements of all classes in the society, downtown, midtown, uptown. Even while our mission has been the upliftment of the disadvantaged masses of the people, and by the progressive elements, who am I referring to? I'm referring to those who use their positions of privilege to improve the conditions of the masses rather than to maintain the status quo. Leader of the opposition, Mark Golding, has awarded 100 students from across his St. Andrew Southern constituency for their outstanding performance in the primary exit profile examinations, PEP, on Thursday. Golding told Observer Online... This year, for the last several years, we have been awarding a, a grant towards first year secondary school tuition costs and general school costs for the children from the constituency of South St. Andrew who uh, scored above a certain level in their uh, primary school, end of primary school exams, whether it was the GSAT, now of course it's the PEP. And all the costs of going back to school are very high, so parents are really feeling it now. So this is particularly meaningful for the parents this year of the children who get these awards. PMP urges government to stand up for farm workers, replace Minister Samuda. The People's National Party is expressing outrage at what it calls the gross, degrading and inhumane treatment that our Jamaican brothers and sisters have been enduring on the Seasonal Agricultural Workers Program in Canada. The party notes that the Minister of Labour and Social Security, the Honourable Carl Samuda, recently went on a tour of some of the farms in Canada, yet did not find anything that jumped out at him in terms of ill treatment, and would like to remind the government that this is not unusual in those circumstances. The PMP said in a press release last Thursday, We are not certain what the minister expected to find on his cursory and official visit. We believe the government ought to engage a special investigative team that has the necessary skills and training to embark on a fact-finding mission on behalf of our Jamaican citizens. Though not uncharacteristic, the cavalier statements made by Minister Samuda were insensitive and disrespectful to the Jamaican farmers in Canada. The PMP is extremely disappointed by the minister's approach and notes with disdain the silence of the Prime Minister on the matter, said opposition spokesperson on Labour and Social Security, Dr. Angela Brown Burke. Opposition spokesperson on Water and Agriculture, Lothan Cousins MP, and opposition spokesperson on Land, Environment and Climate Change, Senator Sophia Fraser Bins, are calling for full disclosure of the terms and agreements of the sale of agricultural lands to Portland Holdings INC. 
The call from the opposition spokesperson has come within the context of the recent discovery that approximately 3,000 acres of arable land in Innswood Village St. Catherine, initially purchased for major agricultural development by a group of investors led by businessman Michael Leachin, is being repurposed for housing development. Land zoned for agricultural use is priced significantly lower than land zoned for housing. The opposition is concerned that this may have been initially designed as a bait-and-switch scheme to benefit private investors. In a statement on Saturday, Cousins said, These disclosures must include an audit of all government-owned property within the Bernard Lodge area and adjoining areas such as Innswood Village, where large acres of land were divested by SCJ Holdings leading up to the 2020 general elections. We need to find out how much land was divested and to whom, as well as the purpose for which they were bought and are being used. Senator Sophia Fraser Baines added, the government must disclose, one, when the application for change of use was made, two, when it was reviewed, and three, the reasons that were provided by the review committee when they made a recommendation to the Prime Minister for the change of use. The PMP wishes to extend our deepest condolences to the family, friends and loved ones of comrade Tommy Lee McCook of Aberdeen District and wife Annette Brown, who both passed away due to injuries sustained in a terrible accident on Thursday afternoon. McCook, a cluster manager and former treasurer of the constituency and a member of the regional executive, died on the spot. The constituency is in mourning and the party also extends prayers for the family of the other driver, 63-year-old Newven Johnson, who lost his life and to those injured in the accident. And with that, we wrap up the last week on Real People Weekly News.